Welcome to Real Estate Q&A with Greg Delane. I'm your host. And on this show, we try to answer frequently asked questions that have either been emailed to me or over the years that I have uh, heard people ask. And, and what I do is I get experienced people on this show, and we go over some of the things about real estate to help the buyers and sellers learn a little bit more about the buying and selling market. And, of course, I always say that experience is the difference. Today on our show... We have a guy, this is a good guy, his name is Don Rizzo, and he's the owner of Sun Mortgage Company up in Cortland Manor, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Don and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Don? How you doing, Greg? Thanks a lot for having me on the show today. Um, my name is Don Rizzo. I'm the owner of Sun Mortgage Company, which I started in 1996. I've been in the business since 1987. I've worked for various different mortgage companies, banks, mortgage brokers, and at this point, I'm a mortgage broker. I think it offers the most uh, to my clientele. Were you born and raised in this area? I actually grew up in uh, Greenberg, in central Westchester. Okay. Um, lived in Westchester all my life. I uh, went to college at uh, State University of Oswego. Uh -huh. uh, studied applied mathematical economics. And pretty much came right out of, the, out of college and got into the mortgage business. Now, you said you got in the industry in 87? 1987. Wow. Wow. So... You know, let me say this, guys. I always say you can't be on my show unless you got some experience and some time behind you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And, Don, I want to start off by getting right to the questions. We only have a half an hour. Sure. And my first question is, uh, what is the current state of the banking and mortgage industry? We're hearing so much going on. What's your feeling about it? Well, there's been a lot of talk, Greg. Um, the industry has gone through a tremendous change and a lot of turmoil over the last year. Uh, but in spite of all of that, the mortgage banking industry is in very, very good shape. There's a lot of money out there to be lent to consumers who can verify their income, who have the assets, and, and solid credit. Um, there's many, many loans out there with 100% financing for first-time home buyers. There are good quality loan programs with, with good interest rates, and people should not be fearful of the mortgage market. Okay. Uh, Don, it's some mortgage. What loans do you write the most of, or what do you what do you handle a lot of? Sun Mortgage is primarily a residential mortgage company. We don't do very much commercial, but for people who are buying or refinancing their their primary residence, mm -hmm. a vacation home, an investment property, and these properties are typically single to four fa family homes, condominiums, or co-ops. And we do first mortgages, second mortgages, home equity lines of credit as well. When does a when does a piece of property stop being a residential piece of property? I heard you say one to four family, but when does it stop? Well, there's actually a blend where you have some commercial. It's called a mixed-use property uh -huh. where you've got a residential and a commercial unit. And then once you uh, go, obviously, completely commercial, it's not a residential anymore. And many, many banks consider properties of five units and above to be commercial properties, even though they're residential. So if I had a uh, six-unit apartment building mm -hmm. that would be commercial generally it would be underwritten to commercial standards which are more focused on the cash flow of the building yes than on the income uh, and the assets of the borrower okay all right Don could you briefly speak to us a little bit about the world economy and the effects on the mortgages based on it the world economy is going to affect the financial markets in many ways depending on if it's, uh, it's oil issues or terrorist issues or uh, the value of the dollar. Everything in one shape or another will affect the financial markets in the United States. It's a matter of to what degree. As things change and move forward, financial uh, bond traders and stockbrokers will change their positions in different equities and bonds, mm -hmm. and those ultimately will affect interest rates. What's happened over the past year with uh, the subprime mortgage debacle is that many bond investors 
pulled out of uh, their investments in mortgage-backed securities. That made the availability of money for certain types of loan programs greatly diminished. Wow. However, the, the basis, the foundation of the mortgage industry, the Fannie Mae, the Freddie Mac, the FHA loans, are in, on solid ground and there's plenty of money out there. The, the issues became the very low down payment programs, the loan programs for people with, with a poor credit rating, poor credit history, uh, and people who were not verifying their income, those loans are gone. Mm. They've evaporated as a result of uh, the mortgage debacle. You know, and, and I, I started in the real estate business, in the industry of real estate around 93, 94. And in the last five years, well, it stopped in 2006, right around there, but ten, into 2005. But I remember people almost being paid to buy a home. I mean, they had no money, and I was, it, it, was, it was amazing to me because when my parents bought their first home, they had a scrimp and put together, and they came to the table with 20%. Mm -hmm. And for them to start like letting people get into homes that didn't have any money to put down and 100% financing, and, and I guess that's how it's turned itself upside down. It, it, it really has. Years and years ago, when our parents were younger, yes. 20% down was the standard down payment. It was a minimum. Mm -hmm. Then something happened that a lot of people don't realize is private mortgage insurance, PMI, came about. Now, PMI insured a bank in the event that there was a default. So the banks were then more comfortable lending a higher percentage of the value of the house. Mm -hmm. As a result, home values went up. There was more people who could participate in the market. Values went up, and the real estate market thrived. The same thing happened over the past five years, where we used to have 10 and 5% down payments. We went to five and, and nothing down. Three and With yeah. nothing down, anybody can participate in the market. If you have people who can put nothing down and not verify their income and don't need a solid credit rating, anybody and everybody can participate in the market. Every, anybody could bid up the market, mm. and that's what happened over the past few years. Mm. We're going to have to take a step back and retrench, reestablish uh, a market level, a fair market level. Um, I think everybody realizes that real estate values have backed off a little bit. It appears as if they're stabilizing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I think we're going to move forward from here in a positive direction. I really do. Well, I'm sure the, the, the industry will right itself. It always does. And for me, uh, it, it will kind of clear out the muddy water. There were so many people that got into this business. There were mortgage companies popping up left and right, Banana Mortgage, Joe Blow's Mortgage. And I said, where are these guys coming from? How long have they been in the business? Agents. I mean, and, I'm, and I know a lot of great attorneys, but there are a lot of attorneys that just decided to let their secretaries become real estate agents and go out there and get into a deal. No training. And it was amazing. I ended up closing a lot of deals where I had to almost train the other agent in mm -hmm. what to do and bring their people to some good people to get the deal closed because I, even though I was working for the seller, I ended up having to teach and do things where, I, and I didn't get in the business that way. So mm -hmm. I think this is a good thing. It straightens out a lot of the nonsense. It is a good thing. Um, Whenever you have an industry that's thriving, mm -hmm. as the mortgage industry and the real estate industry have gone through over the past 10 years or so, you will find a lot of people gravitate towards that industry. The trouble, one of, one of the troubles with uh, the mortgage industry in the past is that there's been very little barrier to entry. Tomorrow, you could come and work for a mortgage company. No training, no, very little knowledge, and deal with people who are making a huge financial decision based on what little you know to date. N not that you know, but anybody off the, off the street. Mm -hmm. That's changing. The laws have changed to require training, continuing education, various different registration levels, uh, and it's a good thing. And I think you'll find that the level and the quality of the people who, who are going to be assisting uh, your buyers with their mortgages is going to be greatly increased. Sure. And we'll all benefit as a result of that. Don, I'm from California, and certainly in California, the, the requirements to become a real estate agent is it's a lot stronger than it is out here, and I wish that they would change some of the rules so that any and everybody just can't go take a 40-hour course and take the real estate license test, mm -hmm. you know? A few, six months ago, eight months ago, 
you didn't need to take any course wow. to be a mortgage banker. Wow. There was nothing. Wow. Okay. Uh, here's a question. Will a new presidential administration bring a fresh outlook and to all of this? What do you think? I think with every presidential administration that comes in, there's a great degree of hope and aspiration to get a lot accomplished. I am hopeful that whoever ends up being our next president will uh, be enthusiastic. I, I hope the markets are encouraged by that person and how they start off. And uh, I'm sure there'll be some initial positive effect and how it goes after that, we'll all see. Yeah, yeah. I, I, a lot of this is, I, I always look for, uh, what are they, when they start in the shop for Christmas, right after Thanksgiving, they call it Black Sunday or something? Or Black Friday. Black Friday. And I, I always check to see the numbers, how big that shopping was, because it's always a state of mind. If people feel good about what they're doing, they'll go out and spend money. If they're cautious, they're worried, they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, everybody mm -hmm. kind of holds back. I agree. Uh, what remedies are there out there for folks who are in trouble with their properties now? That's an interesting question. There was a, uh, a law passed that was uh, designed to assist people who have gotten themselves involved with some of these very high financing programs, especially with the subprime loans that have adjustable rates that are adjusting after two or three years. And this past October, we just had, I think, the peak of adjustments and, and a wave of uh, defaults. There's a program out there where if you have one of these type loans, mm -hmm. um, and you've been maintaining timely payments, but you cannot afford the increase that may be coming. Uh, it's called the freezer teaser, where if you call your lender and negotiate with them, they will freeze your initial interest rate for longer than it would have normally been. Let's say you started off with a 7 or an 8% rate two or three years ago. Yes. Some of these loans are adjusting up to 9, 10, 11%. And it, when that happens, your payments go up dramatically. If you are struggling already, you're completely underwater. This program will allow you to freeze that rate. The trouble with it is that you must have gotten your loan within a specific period of time. You must have maintained timely payments. Yes. And you need to demonstrate that an increase in the payment would, uh, would not be able to be handled. Um, so although it's good, it's it's only really going to work out for, you know, 15 to 25 percent of the uh, the population who has those loans. Hey, folks, if you're out there and you're hearing what he's saying right now, and you're one of those folks, uh, I'm sure they're going to flash uh, Sun Mortgage's number. And uh, and I do know this, Don. You have a fantastic website that you have emailed me things that are uh, very informative. So. Look, you, got, you can't put your head in a hole and hope that it goes away. It reminds me of a picture of an ostrich just sticking his head in a hole. It doesn't get, problem doesn't get solved like that. You've got to reach out and you've got to call professionals. Uh, I, I do want to add, if you okay. do find yourself in that situation, as you said, you need to address it. Most of the time, you're going to need to sell your house. If you cannot afford it, don't just dig in your heels and stick your head in the, in the sand. Yeah. You're going to have to make changes. And most likely big changes and very possibly sell your house call greg delane <laughs> list your house you know uh, I, I i saw this uh person on tv the other day and she made a very good point she said your house is not a hole just don't just keep digging and staying down in it i mean mm -hmm. it's 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 brick it's wood make a move get rid of it do something else mm -hmm. start over don't uh and you will find that there are people who bought their house within the past two years and with what they owe on the house now and what they can sell it for in this market mm -hmm. and after the closing cost and realtor fees they're upside down they would not be able to come out of pocket and pay the shortfall these people need to call their banks speak to their realtors call a lawyer and work things out don't as you said don't stick your head in the sand yeah yeah all right Don is now a good time to mortgage or refinance a home Depends on your personal situation, okay. but if you're buying a house, absolutely. If you have a high-rate mortgage, absolutely look into refinancing your house. As I had mentioned before, there are plenty of quality loan programs out there. 
Um, one of the things I actually wanted to mention to you is the um, economic stimulus package has just been passed, okay. and it should be enacted into law in the very near future. The conforming loan limits, which have recently been, which currently are $417,000 for a single family house. What this means is that loan programs up to that point conform to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac's underwriting guidelines. If you go above it, you're subject to jumbo rates, jumbo programs. The conforming loan limit has been increased as a, as a temporary economic stimulus. Um, in our area, that's significant because many, many homes are worth far more than five hundred or six hundred thousand dollars. Yes. And people in those homes would need to borrow more than four hundred and seventeen thousand. This program will allow people who currently have jumbo loans or uh, 80 20, 80 10, 10 type loans mm -hmm. to combine those, pro those loans or refinance those loans into some very, very competitive prime conforming loans. And now, uh, how much is it? How much does it go up to for a single-family house for that loan? Currently, it's four seventeen. Okay. The economic stimulus package has allowed for it to go as high as seven hundred thirty thousand, roughly. However, in various different parts of the country, it's actually throughout the country, it's going to be based on one hundred twenty-five percent of the median home value. I don't think our area is going to go to seven thirty. I think it's going to end up somewhere in the six thirty to six eighty range, but. Be that as it may, it's still significantly higher than 417. I got a question right now for a property I have, an investment property. Is this, does this have to be your primary, or does it, is it for investment? The answer is I don't know. Okay. However, if things were consistent with the way they are in the past, mm -hmm. no, it does not need to be your primary. But the, uh, the, the final letter hasn't been written. Uh, so I actually don't know for sure, as I don't know the exact loan amount. But if it's based on the conforming guidelines as they are, yes. primary residence, investment property, second home, they would all fall into that category. Because you, as you were speaking, I did an 80-20 on this investment that I did. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've, I'd like to get away from that and do something else. So again, uh, Don emails me all the time a lot of great information. If you want some of this information, uh, go to his email, call him up, and he'll put you on his list. And I'm so happy I've met this guy because he sends me stuff that, you know, I, as you get older, you read a little more. <laughs> you start <laughs> to look at things a little more. All right. What does the future bring, the spring market? I mean, there's, we don't have a crystal ball here on my desk, but mm -hmm. what do you see? I actually have been extremely encouraged. Literally, January 1st came, and my phone started ringing. People are out there buying real estate, as they should. Values are down, and mortgage rates are very, very low. It's an absolutely terrific time to buy real estate. I cannot endorse that enough. Yeah. It is a, a tr it's, it's just a great time for people to go out. There's a lot of houses to choose from, and um, it's a very, very cost-effective time right now for you to look into buying a, buying a home. Oh sure. If I if I was a first time buyer and and you know good job, saved thirty thousand dollars or twenty thousand, ready to move forward, it would be absolutely a good time. You're in a great position mm -hmm. uh, to make a purchase on homes. You see all these homes on the market today. Uh, absolutely, it would be a great time to buy. Uh, an important thing to remember is you always want to buy things when they're low and sell them when they're high. When everybody else is afraid, that's when it's the, the lowest. That's when you're going to get the best value. When everybody else is talking about investing in real estate and speculating in real estate and buying second homes, et cetera, et cetera, that's when the values are high. They're low now. Buy now. I have a uh, listing not far from my house on my block on Lawrence Avenue, and, and, and I have a few other listings, of course, but uh, uh, some of the sellers you know, they're still kind of stuck in what it was a year and a half ago because as, as, as a realtor, as a broker, I do a lot of presentations in people's homes, and the first mm -hmm. thing I hear is, well, I, I should be able to get 700 And I say, well, okay, that's fine. Great number. Why do you feel that you should be able to get that? And they say, well, Mrs. Brown down the street got 650 And I say, yeah, but that was two years ago. And she updated her kitchen her baths, mm -hmm. and, and, but they, and, and when Mrs. Brown had her house on, 
there was only 30 homes within this community. Mm -hmm. Now there's only, now there's like 90. <laughs> so it's a big difference. Uh, An important part is it to say is your house is only worth what someone will pay for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not worth what you think it's worth unless right. somebody will pay you for it. It's, it's tough telling the, the seller <laughs> that, but absolutely. Buyers determine what the fair market is. That's correct. And certainly if I go to a store to buy a nice pair of shoes and the shoes are 350 bucks, and I keep walking past, every time I see those shoes in the, in the window, they'll go down to 250 And when they get down to $135, 140 what what I think is a good price for a good pair of shoes, then I will buy. And that's what they're worth. <laughs> and then that's what they're worth. Okay, well, this, this show went pretty quick. Uh, before I go to these next questions, is there anything that you want to speak about before I go to the final questions of the show concerning your company or anything in the mortgage industry? Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is that I enjoy what I do. I enjoy helping people get mortgages, finance their homes. I enjoy putting them into uh, a program that they can afford and, and help people um, realize their dream. Very well said. Uh, as we were speaking before the show, uh, I sell the same way I want to be sold to. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for me to hear when, because I have people that call either be it attorneys or mortgage people about a deal and, and they're so over the top that I usually put them on hold and let them listen to the music for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I get back on the phone with them if they're still over the top, you know, because it makes me a little nervous and I don't need to be there. And I like to sell the way I like to be, I like to be sold the same way I like to sell too. Mm -hmm. You certainly have a, uh, you could be a doctor, Don, because you have a great bedside manner. You're putting me at ease. Makes me want to go get a mortgage <laughs> right now. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> let's go to the, let's go to my favorite questions. At the end of each show, I ask my guests certain questions. And uh, here, here we go with the first question. Don, what is your favorite sport? Actually, my favorite sport is lacrosse, which um, I, I, I came to appreciate over the past few years. My, I have two boys, one 16 and one who's 12, Jimmy and Craig, and they picked up lacrosse a few years back, and it's an absolutely incredible sport to watch, and, and, and I've just really fallen in love with it. Now, that's the with the stick, and it has a little cup thing that can grab the ball, and they run, and they... That's right. What positions do they play? Uh, both of my boys play m the midfield position, which means that they cover the entire length of the field. Uh, okay. they, sh they shoot, they, they play defense, they fight for the ball. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really, really terrific game. Don, you, did you play that when you were in school? I never played. No? no. In what sports did you play? I played basketball, I played baseball, I swam competitively. Okay. Um, I did shot put. I was actually uh, all-county shot put uh, in Westchester when I was at Sleepy Hollow. Okay. All right. All right, what's your favorite sports team? Well, right now it's got to be the New York Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good. Now, you say you have three kids. I have three kids. I have a daughter who's nine, Anna, who is an absolute doll, okay. and she dances. All right, all right. Got to well get this in because when the show comes <laughs> on, they're going to say, Daddy, and you didn't mention me. That's great. All right, so uh, favorite sports, the New York Giants. I, in fact, I did a show not long ago, and I had to... Super Bowl t-shirts on. I didn't have a guess. I did it by myself, mm -hmm. but I had it on here. All right. What other profession would you like to have practiced if you weren't in the mortgage industry? You know, Greg, I knew you were going to ask me this question, and I thought about it, and I really had a tough time with it. I really like my profession. I enjoy what I do. Um, so I'd have to say mortgage broker would be my first, but if I could throw caution to the wind and do whatever I would imagine an oceanographer, a scuba diver, uh, something really fun that, that every day you'd wake up and just look forward to doing something exciting and interesting. Um, th another thing that I thought of, but... Uh, come on, come on. <laughs> I'd like to be the guy that gives out lottery checks. Every day you'd have a smile. Oh. You'd give a check out to somebody. Every day you'd make somebody's day. I yeah. think that would be great. That would be I don't nice. think that job pays a lot, though. No. Uh, <laughs> We were talking a little bit about uh, the honeymooners before right. the show started and uh, the great shows. And, you know, when I was a kid growing up, uh, the Mutual of Omaha, Wild Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I grew up watching this on, on uh, 
what was it? Uh, I think Jim Fowler. Yeah. yeah. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And Jacques Cousteau. He One was of, always underwater. I love Jacques Cousteau. I used to yeah. watch it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I still watch all of those nature shows. Yeah. I love them. Well, my, my, my daughter really loves them, and I can, I can watch nature shows forever. I can just lock in and... Uh, because what they do, and even today when my wife and I are driving and I see a hawk flying by and I'll point him out and, yeah, love it. Uh, do you have any animals? No, I have no pets. No? Um, I'm allergic to cats and my wife is not a big fan of dogs, so we have no animals in our house. You might not be able to come to my house, man. I got two <laughs> big, large uh, labs. Uh, I love dogs. Yeah, yeah. Any, anytime I go to somebody's house who has pets, I usually spend a good amount of time playing with them yeah they they have unconditional love my dogs and and you're supposed to live longer you're around these these animals that uh, are always happy to see you you're mm -hmm. supposed to live longer now way long time from now Don we're only here for a cup of coffee on this earth mm -hmm. when we leave here uh, and I guess they call this the tombstone question but how do you want to be remembered how, what do you want people to think of you when they bring up Don when you're no longer here with us Actually, uh, I'd like people to smile when they think about me years down the road. I'd like them to say that I was a good father, a good person, and a good friend. Okay. I, I have no aspirations to accomplish some great feat for the earth. Um, I just want to be a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you are. You, you, you came here. You, you, your, your, your answers have been very insightful. I hope it's helped Thank some you. people out there. Uh, listen, folks. Uh, the three biggest financial decisions that you'll ever make, well, three of them, there are a lot more, but three of them that I can think of is uh, marriage, uh, children, and buying a home. Now, I've done all three of them. The first two, they really don't come with directions. Uh, <laughs> you learn as you go. There's no disclosure statements. <laughs> and there's no guarantee. It's not, it's not just add batteries with your kids and they'll run and do things. It, it, that's a learning experience. But buying a home is, there's directions. There's great people doing it, and uh, we have one on the show today. Don, thank you so much. Thank you very much, all Greg. Right. I really appreciate you having me on your show. Thank you. All right, that's a wrap. We're all done. <laughs>